Cl minus is much happier than this Cl gas because remember this Cl gas has seven valence electrons. It's dying to pick up one more electron which is going to be provided by this E. <sighs> now that Cl minus, we've added in an electron, has its complete octet, eight valence electrons, and it's going to be very stable, so it's actually exothermic. It's going to release energy going from the chlorine atom to the chlor chloride anion, and again this is in the gaseous state, so we put the G there. And we can look this up on a table and find the delta H the electron from the electron affinity it, for chlorine is negative 349 kilojoules per mole. The fifth term that you need to know and you need to understand is again what we've been talking about is ladder, lattice energy. And it's just the enthalpy change or delta H that accompanies the formation of one mole of an ionic sol solid from its separated gaseous ions. And I said this in the beginning, but I'm just saying it again. Maybe it'll make a little more sense. Um, you take the gaseous cation, gaseous anion, form the solid ionic solid, and the delta H that's associated with that reaction is, again, the ionization energy. And it should be a negative value because you're going to release energy to form bonds. And negative 787 kilojoules per mole. The opposite, if you're going from a solid to the gaseous state, so the energy required to break that ionic bond, it would be just positive 787. But lattice energy is actually defined as the energy formation of one mole, or energy change that accompanies the formation of one mole of ionic solid from its separated ions. And then finally, we need to understand the standard enthalpy of formation, which is again something we can look up on a table. And it's when you have the actual standard. So this little circle means standard. So it's at a given temperature and one atmosphere. So standard state just, uh, it's a, at a given temperature and it's at one atmosphere. And the formation, that little f, means you're forming one mole of a substance from the reference forms of its elements in their standard states. So sodium is in its standard state, meaning what's its naturally occurring state? Well, it's normally a solid. Remember, it's a metal on the periodic table. And chlorine, we know it's a diatomic element. That's its natural state, and it's a gas. And since we only can form one mole of this, we actually use a, um, one half or a fraction. So, you know, you said, hey, wait, we learned how to balance equations where this would have, we would have multiplied the whole thing by two and said two sodiums plus one chlorine gives two sodium chlorides. But the definition for the standard enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride is starting from, is to make only one mole of sodium chloride. So in this case, you'll see fractions in your chemical balanced equations. So you look this up on a chart and you said, okay, the standard enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride is negative 411 kilojoules per mole. And so now you say, what does this have to do to the, with the Born-Haber cycle? I'll show you. All right, so I have a typical problem from a general chemistry textbook asking, what's the lattice energy of magnesium fluoride solid? given the following information. The enthalpy of sublimation is positive for 146 kilojoules per mole. The first ionization energy for magnesium, which is just the energy required to pull off that first electron, is positive 738 kilojoules per mole. The second ionization energy, which is the energy required to remove the... So you've already formed that cation, now you're removing the second one to form Mg2+. Because remember that the cations are positively charged when you remove an electron. Or, the atom is positively charged when you remove an electron. It forms the cation. But, all right, the second ionization energy for magnesium is positive 1451 kilojoules per mole. The bond dissociation energy for F2 is 
159 kilojoules per mole. That's the energy required to break that F2 molecular bond to form fluorine atoms. And the uh, Ea, or the electron affinity of fluorine ga atom in the gaseous state, is negative 328 kilojoules per mole. And the delta H of formation of magnesium fluoride solid is negative 1124 kilojoules per mole. So use all this information to calculate the lattice energy of MgF2. Well, we need to make sense of all this information. So let's grab another sheet of paper and say, okay, delta H of sublimation for magnesium is 146 kilojoules per mole. So we can write that out saying, well, mag magnesium solid going to magnesium gas has a delta H of sublimation, which is equal to 146 kilojoules per mole. The next thing we were given was the ionization energy for magnesium is positive 738 kilojoules per mole. We have to remember ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from that magnesium in its gaseous state, so we can draw magnesium in the gas, and then the energy required to remove an electron would form Mg plus and one electron. And the delta H again is given the, as the ionization energy for magnesium. The first ionization energy was 738. So delta H is 738 kilojoules per mole. We're also given the second ionization energy for magnesium. Well, that's the energy required to remove an electron from an Mg plus in the gaseous state, which would give you Mg2 plus plus one electron. So the delta H is equal to, and this was given in the problem, 1451 kilojoules per mole. They're all kilojoules per mole. Okay, 145. Now nah, we should always put our units, kilojoules per mole. All right, and then next we're given the bond dissociation energy. Sometimes it's capital B, sometimes BDE or BE, but the bond dissociation energy for fluorine gas is 159. So what is bond dissociation energy? Well, that's the energy required to break the F2 molecule into the atoms, so 2F gas. Again, remember, if you can imagine that Lewis structure of fluorine. You broke that single bond, and now we formed two fluorine atoms, and the delta H is 159 kilojoules per mole. And then we're given the electron affinity for fluorine gas is negative 329 kilojoules per mole. And that's just the energy released when you add one electron to a fluorine atom to form fluoride gas, F minus gas, and delta H is negative 328 kilojoules per mole. And this makes sense that that fluorine anion is going to be much happier than the fluorine atom because this fluorine anion has the same number of electrons as a noble gas, much happier, has a complete octet. This one only has seven valence electrons. Remember, this is a halogen in group 7A. It wants one more, it picks it up to form F minus gas, and it releases energy in the process. And that's the electron affinity for fluorine. And then now, the last thing that we were given was or we're trying to find, or okay, the last thing we we're given was the delta H of formation of magnesium fluoride. What does that mean? Well, it's the amount of energy it's actually released because negative 1124. When you form magnesium fluoride from its elements in their standard states. So 
that is the delta H of formation of this solid from its elements in their naturally occurring state. 